Welcome to Imagine Wealth Without Risk, the podcast that guides you to fulfilling your dreams through guaranteed, secure investing. Here's your host, Ted Thomas. Hi, everyone. This is Ted Thomas, and welcome to the podcast. This is all about tax lien certificates and tax deeds and making money. And I like to say, imagine wealth without risk. And so I'm going to take a little side trip today because uh, I have so many female clients and we're fortunate to have a special guest today. And I guess all my guests are always special, but I have so much uh, uh, trouble saying her name that I might not even get through the whole thing. So let's see how well I do. So it's going to be Stacy Tuchel. Sounds like Bushel, but say Tuchel, Bushel. All uh, right. Anyway, so get the idea. Anyway, she's an expert at uh, like a wealth coach and like a performance coach. And uh, she has a lot of advice for women to help them get over some of the lumpy, bumpy parts of life. And if you have a family, she can give you a little advice on that. And so, Stacey, you on there today? Yes. Thank you so much for having me, Ted. I'm, I'm excited to do this. Okay, great. Now, tell us what you really like to talk about. And I read your bio and all that sounds exciting. So tell me a little bit about you and then tell us a little bit about how you can help women. Now, I, as I said earlier, my ladies are usually 40 plus. They're well established in life. But the kids are growing up. Some have yeah. kids in college and even graduated, but you, uh, you've handled that before. So tell us a little about you. Yeah, definitely. I think we have a very similar audience as well. So that's exciting to hear. So my story begins, I've been an entrepreneur since right out of high school. And in fact, I grew up in an entrepreneurial family. So I think that has played a huge role into who I am and what I do today. But my grandfather started a company about 50 years ago. So I grew up in that business. And by the time I was leaving high school, I decided I was going to continue my love of dance while going to college. And I decided I'm going to teach 17 middle schoolers in my parents backyard completely for free just for fun as a hobby while I was going to school and little did I know I caught the entrepreneurial bug and within three years I had a hundred kids still getting dropped off in my parents backyard <laughs> fortunately wow, 100. yeah a hundred um, every Sunday yeah. that was what I did and uh, fortunately I can see all the minivans now right? yeah, wow. really it really was I'm sure the neighbors were thinking what is going on um, but because I grew up in the family that I did, they quickly looked at what I was building and said, I think you have a business here. And I'm so fortunate oh. that they suggested that. So today, 17 years later, I am running two performing arts academies in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. We now have about a thousand dance and music students that come to us every week. We've got about 45, oh. 50 employees, and we've been grossing over a million dollars a year for several years now. Congratulations. You're someone worth listening to. I can say that, that to my audience and feel clear headed. Thank you. So yeah, so naturally, I think a lot of people just started to say, how are you doing this? We see your parking lot is full. You're growing so quickly. And I just started to share at first, it was with um, a friend who was a doctor opening up a medical spa. Um, a next person that came to me was like the local karate studio. And I just started to share. And now a few years later, I teach a lot of small business owners how to drive more traffic, convert more customers and really truly live a life with as much balance as possible because I am, I'm a mom of two. So I've got a lot going on. Wow. Wow. That's pretty, pretty exciting. You're a fast start right out of I, school and you went right into business. That's it. Nowadays they say you got to go to eight years of college or get some uh, fancy degrees. Sounds like you did, uh, did, did it all at once. So good. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. And I did end up getting my degree in business. Oh, However, really? I will say that I learn more from doing than going to school, right? A lot of us do. So I think having that, taking action, just making it happen. That right, was right. such a big thing for me. So yes, it's great to get that education. Great to go yeah. get certificates or coaching, but it's also great to yeah. take action and implement. Yes, absolutely. So tell us a little bit about this before you tell us, give us some advice on business. Tell us a little bit more about the, the dance schools. You have you say they have a thousand people a week. That's a lot, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. So we wow. were definitely the biggest in our area. We are, if you maybe had your child take dance or you're in that world a little bit, I will tell you that yeah. we do things a lot differently than what you're typically seeing. 
And in my industry, when you go to the bank and you try to get a loan, a dance studio is literally labeled a high risk business. <laughs> it is not really? something most bankers want to loan money for. However, we <laughs> own both of our commercial buildings. We built one from scratch, bought another huh? one, remodeled it. And we, through the recession, continue to grow and continue to build. Uh, actually, our first building was built in 2008 when everything was happening. Wow. Now, what do you attribute all this to? That's about we want to hear, right? Yeah. I think the biggest thing is I didn't start with the intention to make money. I started with, I love mm. this and I want to share what I'm doing. And because uh -huh. it was such a pure intention, I really think that my customers at the time, the children, but then also their parents could feel it. And they just kept sharing what I was doing. And it started to really grow organically. When we went from 17 uh -huh. to 103 years, there was no marketing. There, there was no, I wasn't trying to make it bigger. It was just the word kept spreading. So I think that was probably uh -huh. the biggest thing that happened. And same thing in the, when I started my coaching consulting company, all of a sudden it wasn't, I was trying to make money off of the doctor or the karate or the chocolatier. I was just going, I love what I'm doing. Let me teach you. Let me help you because it, it business is hard. So if I can save you some time and some money, let me do it. And they would take me to lunch or pick my brain over a phone call. And I just loved it. And again, that's organically how my second business started. You don't have a believer on the other end of the line here because you can tell me that it was all because you were in love with it, but uh, people only buy because they're getting some results. So you're producing some result that everybody else isn't producing. So I'm a front lines um, of capitalism guy and I say, look, you better produce something awful good if you want yeah. people to, uh, to keep buying it. So tell us really what you're pr producing because yeah. I like all that touchy feel <laughs> stuff. That sounds good. And uh, I didn't just spend 25 years in college and want to listen to all that little cool stuff. I want to know, and my client wants to know, what kind of results do you produce? Because yeah. that's what brought the people back. That's the real world. Yeah. And I think I discovered very quickly, I had that imposter syndrome, that self-doubt of, am I really good enough? I had competitors that their business was 30 years old and 15 years old. Those are my two biggest competitors. And I started to yeah. really say, can I compete against them? These are big businesses. Am I really going to be able to do this? And what I realized, I, I made the mistake that most entrepreneurs do. I started to basically copycat, but try to be better than them. And when you just oh. try to be better than your competitor, all that's happening is you're starting this war of each of you just trumping one another. And I said, how can I be different? So the biggest oh. thing that I saw in this space, in my industry, was most studios are trying to produce these amazing quality dancers who go on to dance on Broadway and in college and all of these music videos and things like that. But what I realized oh. was only a small percentage of them actually want that when they join and then actually do that. So I said, how can I be different here? What if I don't say I'm the best of the best, come to me so your kid can go be a Rockette? What if I say we're the place that kids can be kids and just have fun? And this is a really social, fun, lenient, we're not strict. It's just a place where your kid's going to have a great time all week long. And it was oh, a risky see. move. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, so you made yourself different right away. You differentiated yeah. right away. Yeah, oh, I mean, it took, hey, it took a little Good bit marketing. of time. Yeah, it took a little bit of time for me to recognize that it was a strength. I think I sat there for a little bit yeah. feeling like it was my weakness. And when I re realized, yeah. hey, we're growing faster than ever, it was because the real population that takes dance classes, it's the mom who wants her little three-year-old to have fun. She's not thinking Broadway right. when the kid is three years old. So I think right, discovering right. this hidden niche or niche, I think that was yeah. my superpowers I didn't know I had. Wow. Wow. And so how did you develop that? This is pretty clear. Yeah. So I think one of the big things that helped me right away in the beginning was I had this, I don't want people to think she was successful right away. There were so many struggles. And in fact, when I finally started saying, this is a business, we're going to start charging, bringing money was one of the hardest things that kind of messed it all up when it's supposed to be this positive thing. <laughs> so I messed had it all struggles, up. Yeah, right? desperate check. Oh my God. <laughs> it was so much more fun when this was free. Now that we're bringing in money, I'm not a fan of it. <laughs> So I got a postcard in the mail. This was back in 2005. Yeah. So this was still yeah. snail mail marketing. And I got this postcard and it was the best copywriting. What on Facebook ads today, right? Hitting all the yeah. points, all my struggles. And it said two day conference in New York city. 
Now I'm from really? Wisconsin. Yeah. I'm from Wisconsin. Yeah. And to me, I was 21. I had never done something like that before. I'd never invested in my business and that like in that yeah. way. And a thousand dollars was a lot of money to me, but I knew yeah. I didn't know everything. And I did, I, I didn't even know what I needed to know. So I decided let's right. do it. Let's go for it. And I went to New York and that was like my first dip in personal development and everything changed when I could see successful business owners that already had done oh. what I was trying to do. Yeah. And who taught this conference? His name is Sam Beckford. He's a Canadian and um, he oh. was my mentor for a very long time. And he's actually the one that helped me see the value in buying and building my build buildings instead of renting when he's like, you're this age, you could be, you know, right. investing in this. And by the time you're this age, you'll have this other retirement account and all of these assets. And it was a big game changer. And now I've been doing real estate for the last over 10 years, I'd say. So you're doing real estate too. So you got a dance studio and real estate. Yeah, we have a couple residential properties that we use for short-term rentals, Airbnb, home away type properties. Oh, yeah. And then we had, it's amazing. <laughs> I'm a big fan of having, they say the average millionaire has seven streams of income, right? So as I was learning, how could I still make this tie in and how could I utilize this to really help me look at the end picture here, the end goal, I started to pick up some of these strategies along the way. So yeah, we've got residential and then the commercial buildings that we use. And then as well as we, when I did the second location, knowing a little bit about real estate, I said, what if we added on a suite that somebody else could rent? So we have a nail salon that's attached to one of our dance studios, which is perfect because mom <laughs> drop their kids mm -hmm. off and get their nails done. And then that person pays me rent as well. Do they stop and get their nails done? Do oh they? yeah, definitely. It's the perfect time because the class is about an hour, which is pretty much what oh. it takes for your nails. So it's really great oh, business for both of us. Oh my goodness. Oh, that's great. So you're doing the marketing for the girl next door. Yeah. Yeah. Good for you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yep. yeah. So give my uh, lady some advice. I would say, what do, they, what do they do? What do they have to do to be successful in business? Now, don't tell me all that touchy feely BS. I don't hear that. <laughs> I want to hear well, that nitty gritty of being in business. That, yeah. That's what they end up doing. Now, they, you can say all that great stuff you know, that you, oh, you love it and all that. You go home tired at night, don't you? I do go home tired, but I wake up excited. And I do think you need yeah. like the fluffy stuff as well, but I'll definitely give you some more meat so that you've got some action takers yeah. out there. I would say really just, committing to taking action consistently, even if you feel like you're not ready or you're unsure, or is mm -hmm. it the right time? So many clients mm -hmm. that I coach are just yeah. ready to get ready. And you need to go for at least four years, right? Oh my, oh, I don't even, some of them, I feel like even longer. And every time somebody <laughs> messages me, they're saying things like, I can't wait to work with you. I'm getting ready. And I'm like, Okay, yeah, so yeah. that's not how this works, right? So I yeah. think the more you can just say, I'm committed to taking action in my business every day, even if I don't uh -huh. even feel that I'm at a place where I should be or could be or all of those, I think the more you can do, the faster you get feedback. So I always say to people, you've got to be committed to throwing spaghetti at the wall, right? We're experimenters. We're marketers. We are going to throw things at the wall and see what sticks. Oh, we're marketers now. Oh, yeah. so something new's happened. Wait a minute. Oh, we're marketers now. Oh my goodness. We're marketers now. All the, she's sneaking the stuff in later, folks. Yeah, we're marketers and we're that salespeople. Stuff. That's what people oh, do. Oh, salespeople now too. Oh my God. Yes. I thought this was all touchy feely. We all loved it. Loved our work and all that. Yeah. Yes. Okay, so yeah, lots of different pieces. So we're throwing <laughs> spaghetti at the wall. We're seeing what yeah. sticks and then we're evaluating what's stuck. Why did it stick and how can we do more of it? But then don't forget about what fell to the floor. So whatever fell to the floor, you're going, why didn't it stick? What could we do better? Or is this just not what my market needs and I need to scrap it? Okay. You, you let me say something for a second and then yeah. I bet you can repeat exactly what you just said. How about if we tell them to fail forward fast? Absolutely. And Every then day. what should they do? Just say what you just said a minute ago. And that all applies, doesn't it? Absolutely. Absolutely. And I think yeah. that's such an easy thing to say. And people say, yeah, I get it. I get it. But they're still afraid to do it. There's so much mindset that goes into being an amazing business owner and you are going to wake up every day and there is going to be something that's questioning you 
can I do this? Am I worthy of this? And whatever that is, but the more you do it, the more you're going to gain confidence to raise your prices, to actually yeah. ask somebody to buy your product, right? To put yourself out there. Huh? You talk like a marketer. You don't talk like a <laughs> dance teacher. I always say I dance was the first thing <laughs> that I happened to discover and really, but I really think whatever I would have discovered, I would have somehow turned into a business because at heart, I think it's in my blood. I am an entrepreneur for sure. Oh, a greedy businesswoman. I got it. Now. Okay. I got, <laughs> yes. it. I got it. Showing all my cards. Does right? your husband give you as much heat as I do? No, and he's, no. he is not in the business. He, he has his own career. I see. Okay. That's good. All right. Yeah. So continue where you were. I'm, I'm just um, having a little fun with you because I can tell you one of those great personalities that I can do that with. So you're handling the adversity you're in luck. very well. You're in luck. Yeah. Yeah. So I, yeah. Think, I think that one is a big one. I think yeah. also being okay when things don't go your way or even having well, the knowledge of what is good and bad. A lot of times people will say, I tried this launch, I tried this promotion, and I only got this many people. And they say only, and I'm looking at them thinking, that's amazing. You just converted, but 10% of your email list or 20%, whatever, but they don't have the knowledge of, is this even good? But they think, oh, five people, five people's not great. So they start to judge themselves when they just don't know the numbers and what is actually making up. Should I continue with this product program or service? Now, let me ask you a question about. You get up in the morning and you feel good, you're excited, you're motivated. And how do these women who are grown families in many cases, they really want to do something and they, they're not, they weren't hindered in any way, but the tradition was 25 years ago is to finish college and maybe get married or have a family and, and what have you. And they grow and then bringing up a family is a full-time challenge and uh, and now they want to do something else they don't want to do what their husband's doing they want to do like you so how do you motivate yourself and oh my god now suddenly you're going from dancing to real estate to marketing and you're pretty eclectic and how do they do that mm -hmm. so i would say especially knowing your audience and saying a lot of them are in their 40s or older no right. Where I'm at and how it was a little hard for me to jump into some of this techier stuff and social media, I boycotted Facebook until I, I realized, okay, I've got to get on here for business. This was not something that came natural to me. So understand that if you want to grow a business in this world, in this day and age, you need to know that part of it, or you need to be able to outsource those parts of it. So I'm not saying you have to do it. I'm saying it. It is such a big part of this world and how much we can fast track our results by getting out there on social media and even just having somebody on your team help you with it. If you're not wanting to learn it yourself is really important, but you still need to know, they say know enough to be dangerous, right? You need to know enough to be dangerous. And I definitely say, get out there, start learning, start seeing what's out there. And I always say to people, find somebody that you like what they're doing. You could see yourself doing something similar because you need a proven business model. You need to see it yeah. for your brain to really, truly believe it's possible. And the more you can That's surround really good advice. yourself, good advice. thank you, really good. the more you can surround yourself with evidence, the more your confidence will grow that you actually, in fact, can do this. Did you meet resistance from men or anybody? That's a good question. I would say I definitely met resistance more with personal family and friends who don't understand the world of Whoa. entrepreneurship. Whoa. And not in Go a into that. Way. Go into that. Go into yeah. that. Yeah. yeah. So let's think about this. So if you're somebody who's a go-getter and you're constantly thinking, oh, I could do this, I could do that, right? You and I are going to get along really well. But if you're somebody who views entrepreneurship as risky, as a risky move, and you start sharing right. that with somebody who's very comfortable in their nine to five, and you're speaking a whole new language, they will say things not to hurt you, but to protect you. They'll say things like, I don't know if this is a good idea, or do you really think you could do that? They'll say things because they're trying to support you in the way that they know they feel safe and secure. So I wouldn't be sharing your next big idea with your, your spouse who doesn't get it or your mom or your siblings. I would be sharing with a safe space of other entrepreneurs, people that hear your idea and think that's amazing. You should do that. Go for it. 
you need to hear that more yeah. than the naysayers yeah. questioning it. Yeah. Yeah. Now let's get, let's get cover the uh, a little more close in now because see, I get women that uh, I teach people. I don't teach in Wisconsin, but I teach it in every other state okay. uh, that uh, we buy uh, properties from the tax collector. That's okay. a bizarre business for most people, but I get women that come and learn how to do it. And of course, then they, their husband is just shaking their head no uh-huh. all the time. So, so they don't get support. Now, after they do a deal, oh my God, then it's the sun just came up and it's all romance all over again. Right. And so how do women handle that? Yeah. And what you just said is after they do it and they make it happen, what did you do? You showed your husband evidence. So now he believes it. So <laughs> I think what you need to do is you need to show the evidence before you even ask for that support. So a lot of times we might listen to a great podcast or watch a webinar or go to a conference and we come home and we try to convince our spouse in 30 seconds what we just took away in three days. And you wonder exactly. why he's not buying it, right? So yeah. I always say to people- Well, plus I, you leave out all the important points that oh you can't goodness. remember. And yeah. those are the ones that he had in his mind, right? Yeah, Absolutely. So it's yeah. it's really yeah. hard because we're, we're really bad translators when it comes to what it is right. we want to do. So the more right. you can have that person come along in your journey, right? Go to the conference right. together, listen to that podcast. Even if, if you're like, I know you don't like this, but your support would mean the world to me. Getting them on board of, could you just listen to this with me? Do it together. Because the more he can hear the person talking about the testimonials and the case studies and all of the stuff they're bringing up in the conference, the more he'll start to see the evidence. But the problem is right now, this is so foreign to him and he thinks you're speaking another language. Okay, so you said, uh, my interpretation is that uh... First of all, they've got to have more patience. Mm-hmm. Secondly, they've got to slowly, I call it broach the subject or get into the subject of, I need your help. So they're still the feminine woman asking for help and then slowly introduce new ideas to him, but not to go to the conference, fall in love with the, everything you saw, know you can do it and go home and try and tell him about it because he, he's just going to be resistant, which... Right. You just said what I see every weekend. I Like this weekend, I was in Toronto, Canada. Now, right now, I'm in Florida. But yesterday, I was in Toronto, Canada, giving a class. And women gravitate to this, right? Everything I do right away, not because of me, because they see they can do it. Mm-hmm. And then they go home. And I had some of them actually come back. The women come back with the husband. And yeah. he's sitting there with a hat on and his arms crossed. <laughs> but after they get done here and get for two hours, oh, maybe this is a good thing to do. Yeah. But you're saying there's a whole... I call that the pre-persuasion process. Yes, 100%, for sure. Yeah, and the thing yeah. Too, I, we are all different, right? We have all different marriages, different relationships. I am right. not in a place where when I go make an investment, I have to go back to my husband and ask, what do you think? Because I run this business, I am the CEO. So right. there are differences in the way that people run their business and their marriage. So you've got to figure out how is this working and how can you make this work with your business and how do you get your spouse to understand that this is important to me and I'm asking for your support and I'm asking for your trust, but then you better do the work and make sure that you are trustworthy and you're making good decisions decisions and he's not going to regret this. You know what I mean? Yes, I do know what you mean. And and, and I think that's one of the problems. And once they commit to doing something, they're going to have to really uh, buckle down and get it done. It's their job. When they get out of the bed and put the feet on the floor in the morning, it's their responsibility. Can't dump it off on somebody else. It's not the kids. It's not the weather. It's not whatever. Nice, nice work. Uh, We're going to run out of time. Give me a few things you'd like to close with and tell people about your workshop. Is your workshop a touchy-feely workshop, a marketing <laughs> workshop? What is it? Yeah, so I... I do not a dance things. workshop, I know Not that. a dance yeah. workshop. No, I heavily <laughs> focus on marketing. So my podcast is the Foot Traffic Podcast. But typically okay. people come to me to drive more traffic, convert more customers. That's typically what I okay. do. Okay, how do you do convert more traffic? Just give me a one minute version. How do I convert more traffic? Getting yeah. a You're reason using the to word convert. Them. You didn't yeah. say generate. You said convert. Convert. There's a lot yeah. of difference between generate and convert. So, words. so with converting, mm. the biggest thing I always say to my clients is, what are you doing or what are you offering to get them to buy today? Not tomorrow, not six months from now, but what is the sense of urgency? 
So whether that's scarcity or bonuses, an on-site special, something that gets them to go, I've got to get this now. Because when you decide, okay, I'm going to put this offer out, they can come get it whenever they want, they'll tell you they'll come back for it, you'll believe it, and then they won't. And we need them to commit and have a reason to jump in now. Okay, I'm gonna put you in the hot seat. Yeah. Are you gonna video it? Am I going to video it? The what shop, the mean? workshop. Are you going to video the workshop? Oh, got it. I'm sorry. No, so I have a podcast. I have, like, we do challenges in our Facebook group, foot traffic community, but I don't have a specific workshop coming up right this second. You have one coming up soon, right? I do challenges about every month, so I have another one coming up okay. in December. Yeah, so we do I, them about I just want you to send me a video of it so I can see it. Oh, gotcha. Um, yeah, no, I definitely can. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, okay. That, that was like pulling teeth on that I'm one. I'm sorry. I was very off. confused what you're asking. <laughs> I wasn't clear in my question. I understand <laughs> that. Okay. If the person doesn't answer you right, you asked the question the wrong way. It wasn't you no didn't worries. do it wrong. I did. Anyway, so that wasn't good. All right, so what, what else would you like me to know? And do you, have a, you want to tell us where your podcast is for people that – would like to tune in and listen to a marketeer turned dance instructor and real estate entrepreneur? Yes. Yeah, so you can find it wherever podcasts. Did you take those all as compliments? I hope. I, I did. I did. You okay. can find it wherever <clears throat> podcasts can be found. It's just called Foot Traffic with Stacey Tushel. And then we have a Facebook group that is an after show where we actually dive in and people can ask questions based off of the podcast. And that's Foot Traffic Community Online. I would say the biggest thing that I would love for people to walk away with is really understanding that they can make it happen. And again, to get around those people that can, and that can prove it. And I think Ted, like you had said before, they do their first deal, they get excited, keep getting those quick wins to get excited, to see what you're really capable nice, of nice. and keep stretching yourself. Right. You're a great advisor. I su I suggest that you're probably going to be something a lot more than you are already. And you're <laughs> tremendously successful. So I congratulate you on all the things that you're doing, but I think this is just the start of a um, the rocket ship. You're on the way. So, yeah, thank um, you so much. Keep, the, keep the engine lit and keep going. And uh, thanks for being a part of our podcast today. I appreciate you a lot. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much for having me here. Thank you for joining us today. Go to tedthomas.com to learn how you can start making smart, secure investments today. Be sure to check out the rest of the episode to find out more about Imagine Wealth Without Risk.